everyone, welcome to this week's recap. We're in our second unit in the Gospel Project curriculum titled, Let Us Make a Name for Ourselves. And this lesson is called Sin Spreads. So we're gonna look at Genesis chapter four and see how really in the beginning of things, how sin begins to spread throughout all of creation. So I started this week's lesson by asking the kids to think about things that don't really mix well. We talked about Mentos in Coke. Now, the reaction there can be explosive, but it's usually pretty harmless. On the other hand, if you pour gasoline onto a fire, that doesn't really mix well and it can be really dangerous. Some of the students even talked about a, a toaster in a bathtub doesn't mix well. Don't do that, don't try that. Anyhow, um, so I wanna encourage you to open the word of God to Genesis chapter four, and we're gonna look at scripture here. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are and what you're about and your goodness to us. Father, thank you for your word allowed to come alive to us and change us. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. So Genesis chapter four, one through seven says this. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain, a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain in his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry and his face fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. So we see here sometime after Adam and Eve and in, in their mistake and their fall, they began having children. And Cain was the firstborn and Cain was working in the field and he brought an offering to the Lord. Now, just to think, we are created for the Lord. We are created to worship him and bring him glory. We talked about this in the a couple last lessons ago, just bringing him glory, giving God fame, uh, his renown, his goodness. And so here Cain and Abel are bringing their offerings to the Lord to just say, thank you. Wow, God, you're so good. Here is, here's what you've given to us here. We want to give back to you. And Cain brings something of the ground, but Abel, the younger brother, on the other hand, brings the very best of his flock. He brings the fat portion, uh, the stuff with all the flavor, the good stuff. Now, it seems that Cain, you know, just brought his leftovers. Abel brought his best. For whatever reason, Cain knew what was required of God, uh, for God to accept his offering, as we see in verse seven, but he failed to obey it, much like his parents had done in the garden. Cain's sin was worsened by how he responded to God's correction. Instead of responding with humility or with confession, Cain lashed out with anger, as seen in verse five. In his, if his offering hadn't already revealed his heart toward God, his reaction definitely did. Cain was self-righteous and he was self-justifying. His offering wasn't about worship and obedience to God, but instead it came from a heart of pride and selfishness, almost like obligatory. Okay, I'll take to the Lord, I'll give him something, but I'm not gonna give him the best because you know I don't really care. When confronted with our sin, by God or by others, we often respond with defiance and anger. But anger always adds gasoline to the fire of sin. In fact, James 1.20 says this, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When we fail, sin is crouching at the door, ready to help us give into more sin. The enemy, Satan, wants us to, wants us to get angry and act out toward God and toward others. But when we respond with humility, we can be restored and forgiven. For each of us, we can learn right here, you know, sin spreads when we respond with anger. Instead of humbly 
uh, being corrected by the Lord in doing better next time, we see that Cain responds just with getting angry. And we would do well to respond with humility because we can be restored and we can be forgiven. Let's move on to Genesis chapter 4, same chapter, verses 8 through 11. And we're going to see that not only does sin spread when we respond with anger, but here we're going to see that sin spreads when we respond with comparison. Cain spoke to his, so this says in verse 8, Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother, Abel, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth and received your brother's blood from your hand. Though Cain's offering was rejected on his own merits, he couldn't resist the temptation to compare to his brother Abel. His combined anger and, the com and his comparison produced a deep heart resentment and hatred for his brother that ultimately got him to a place of murder where he killed his brother. This is a problem because comparison is contrary to love. Comparison is rooted in the spirit of competition with others. The aim is to make oneself feel as though they are better than somebody else. Love, on the other hand, is rooted in a spirit of care for others. It seems that Cain may have formed his identity and self-worth in the relation to his brother. Have you ever formed your identity and relationship to somebody else? When that comparison no longer fueled his self-esteem, he was, so basically, when, when he no longer felt like he was doing better than his younger brother, he was filled with resentment and hatred. He didn't measure up. But I want to note here that God still shows justice. Even when the wicked seem to win in this life, God takes up the cause of the righteous. When there is no witness, when no one heard Abel's cries, God heard and was moved to act on his behalf. There is an assurance that comes from these stories. God, not the wicked, will always have the final word. So sin spreads when we respond in anger. Sin spreads when we respond uh, when we respond in comparison, basically thinking like fuel on the fire. It's growing. Sin here in this story is growing. It's being fueled. Let's look at our last section of verses. Uh, 17 through 25, we are going to see that sin spreads when we respond with pride. Now, there's a lot of big names in here. I might mess some of them up, um, but we can laugh at that, I hope. Cain knew his wife. So verse 17, Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built a city, he called the name of the city after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad fathered Mahuj Mahujiel, and Mahujiel fathered Methu Methushiel, and Methushiel fathered Lamech, and Lamech took two wives. The name of one was Ida, and the name of the other was Zilha. Ida bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of those who play the lyre and pipe. Zy, um, Z, uh, Zyla uh, was born to Tubal Cain. He was, the fo he was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Naamah. And Lamech said to his wife, Ida and Zilha, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's, re if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. 
So strange to me. But continuing, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another offspring instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. While Seth's descendants were calling on the name of the Lord, and I want to point this out with what we see here it is so fascinating that the Adam and Eve had another son, Seth, and Seth was born after Abel's death. Well, God had appointed for for um for me another offspring. And, uh, and so so oh so while so here in Scripture we see that Seth's descendants were calling on the name of the Lord in verse twenty five. But Cain, however, was naming cities after his children. And I just want to point this out because all in all, like Cain was going down a bad path. We can see that there was anger there. We can see that there was um, comparison. And we can see here that there was pride. Now, Seth's descendants were, were coming back to this place of a heart of God, uh, bringing glory to God. But Cain, however, was just more or less building his own kingdom, building cities, naming them after his own kids. The pride of Cain's children only grew generationally. One of his children, Lamech, was the first polygamist or somebody with multiple wives. Uh, and this is the first person that we see in scripture that was a polygamist. He was also a very violent man. And as I just said, like, it was so strange to me uh, that he, he, he killed an older man for wounding him. He killed a younger man for striking him. And then he proudly boasted to his wives about it and said that his punishment would be even worse. And it was like he found pride in that. Uh, he boasted about his revenge and his retaliation. All in all, here we see sin spreading. Sin spreads when we do not respond with humility and love. I encourage some of the guys in small group, and I was very careful to hopefully not take this out of context, but I believe that it was Martin Luther himself that said, when you sin, sin boldly. And I'm not saying to, to and I'm not advocating a life of sin. But what's interesting here is when you look at Cain's reaction to correction, he couldn't just say, oh, I made a mistake and own his mistake. In fact, when he was called out for sin, he threw the, the gasoline onto the fire of sin with anger, with comparison, with pride, to where it grew even worse and worse. And so our encouragement and the challenge was to, if you make a mistake, if you find yourself in sin, own it. Own it and work toward reconciliation. Um, own it and respond with humility and love. Come back to a place where your heart is for the Lord. Reconcile with friends and family, with loved ones. Um, we can learn here to not allow sin to spread in our lives, to not react with, with causing the wrong things to mix by tossing the gasoline onto the fire of sin. So um, that was just kind of our, our lesson our takeaway was to, to allow this piece of biblical history to challenge us and shape us. With Jesus, there is always a better way to live. And we can see Jesus who lived in a, a, a perfect life of humility to bring glory to the Father. We can choose to live in humility and love, and we would do well to do so. I hope that you're blessed this week by this lesson and that you continue to be challenged by God's scripture.